There are few in today's footballing world that may be aware of the existence of the Anglo-Italian Cup, but it was a competition that lasted for nearly 26 years and produced a wide variety of winners, with no team winning it more than twice. The competition, however, wasn't short of controversy and has largely been lost in the history books. This is a story of the Anglo-Italian Cup, football's forgotten trophy. Initially, the Anglo-Italian League Cup was in place after being founded to compensate third-tier Swindon Town after they were denied a place in the Intercities Fairs Cup as they were third-tier team, despite winning the League Cup in 1969. Swindon Town would face Roma, the winners of the Coppa Italia. The tournament was the brainchild of Italian football agent Luigi Peronace, who, based in London, was keen to bridge the gap between English and Italian football. Swindon added another trophy to their cabinet, defeating Roma 5-2 over two legs. The tournament did well, attracting popularity, and led to the creation of the Anglo-Italian Cup in 1970. The tournament would be played each summer with the aim of helping teams keep their fitness and earn money during pre-season. The first tournament took place with six English teams and six Italian teams, with an unusual format where the teams were split into groups but the best performing team from England would face the best performing team from Italy in the final. Unusual rules were also put into place, with teams getting a bonus point for each goal they scored, and offside would only count inside the penalty area. Swindon continued their great form in cups, with a 4-0 win over Juventus at home, followed by a 1-0 win in Turin. On top of this, Middlesbrough and West Ham both defeated Roma. Swindon would be the first English representative in the final, up against Napoli. Swindon faced the Neapolitans at the Stadio San Paolo and raced into a 3-0 lead with the trophy in sight. Unfortunately, the home crowd were not happy, throwing objects onto the pitch before they entered the turf. The game was abandoned with 11 minutes to go as supporters rioted, which led to 30 arrests and around 100 injuries. Fortunately for Swindon, however, they were still declared winners of the Anglo-Italian Cup. The next season, there was further English glory, as Blackpool defeated Bologna 2-1 to take the trophy home. Blackpool reached the final the next year, but lost to Roma, and Newcastle would win it in 73. However, this edition of the tournament was again marred by violence, mainly seen in a game between Hull City and Lazio. Interest in the tournament quickly drained, and after Newcastle's win, it was shelved. However, three years later, it would make a comeback, this time open to semi-professional teams. England and Italy would both have six entrants. This time, it would be the Italians who dominated. The first final between Wimbledon and Monza saw Monza come out on top. Bath City reached two consecutive finals in 1977 and 1978, but lost both times to Lecco and Udinese, respectively. In 1977, an 18-year-old Carlo Ancelotti played for Parma in the competition, as they were held to a 0-0 draw by Yeovil. In fact, the only time the tournament was won by an English team in this era was when Sutton defeated Chieti in the 1979 final. Until 1986, the Italian domination continued, and also in 1986, Marcelo Lippi made his coaching debut in the tournament, leading Ponce Dera to a 6-1 win over Merthyr Tidville. The tournament was walked back in its original form in 1992 to replace the full Members' Cup. The tournament was open to teams from the second tier of both England and Italy and would take place over the course of the regular season. The first final of the reform competition saw Cremonese defeat Derby County 3-1 at Wembley. Notts County lost to Brescia the next year, but redeemed themselves the year after by defeating Ascoli 2-1. They would be the last ever English winners, as only one more edition of the tournament would take place, which saw Genoa defeat Port Vale in the final. Interest in the tournament was continuing to slide, and the violence on show in the fixture between Birmingham and Ancona in 1995 did not help the tournament's reputation. The FA and the Italian Football Association also struggled to agree on when fixtures should be played, and in the end, the two parties decided to call it a day.
The memories of the Anglo-Italian Cup have sadly slid into obscurity, which is a crying shame. Despite not being the most prestigious tournament, it was still held in high regard by many, allowing teams to face opponents they may never have done so otherwise. Former Blackpool keeper John Burridge has stated that the Tangerines winning the tournament in 1971 was one of the proudest moments of his career. The Anglo-Italian Cup was a tournament like no other, full of bizarre moments that was ultimately the love child of a man who loved football, looking to help build bridges between two giant footballing nations. It is clear to see why it was discontinued, but it remains one of the great hidden gems in the history of the beautiful game.